We're going to be looking at Vericut's additive hybrid simulation of this Thermwood Large Scale Additive Manufacturing or LSAM machine. Let's take a look at the part we're going to be making. This is a relatively small part for this machine made out of thermoplastic composites. Programmed by the LSAM 3D print software, this was printed in layers which we'll be able to see in this NC program right here. One of the unique things about Vericut simulation is reading the G-code or post-processed codes directly. You can see them in the head-up display here. For example, there was a 15.2 G-code that actually put the machine in a squared off dog leg kind of motion. We'll also be able to step through the additive functions such as M3, which turns on the screw that feeds the composites material, and we can see the material being deposited here. And as this path wraps up the first layer, we see an M5 in the NC program, which turns off the material feed. Therefore, we don't see any material being added at that time. So by reading the codes directly in the NC program, we're able to get a great view of the additive process as it builds apart on this machine. Now I have this motion slowed way down, as you can see here on the slide bar. If I move this to the right, it'll gradually increase speed. So you can literally go as slow as you want or as quick as you want to see this part being built while it's being built you have full access to the part to be able to view it from different angles and watch the additive process as it builds up the layers. If you don't wish to see the additive motions you can simply push the slide bar all the way to the right and it'll build apart very quickly. When the first operation or the 3D print process is finished we can again do a quick check to see if it matches our design intent. What we're looking for here is to make sure that there's excess material on the outside of the part so that it can be machined. It looks like everything went through as well as expected here. We can also use a section function to take a look at the interior of the part and section away a portion of the NC machine as you see over here. By moving the slide bar, we can get different views of the part. When satisfied with the results, we can simply step or play forward. And this is a two-step process on this machine, which now goes to the machining stage. So the part has been moved from its build-up location and put on a pedestal style of fixture. And looking at the NC program, we are now switched over to do the routing or the milling program. Again, all G-code controlled. So when we press play, we start seeing the actual machining process as it's whittling down this part to its final shape. As we did with the additive program, we can speed up the simulation to make it happen faster. And we can also slow it down when we get to areas of interest. One area that I found interesting when viewing this simulation was right here, as we see going on, machining into the fixture. If we get a little closer look at it, what we'll find out here is that the block underneath the part that was supporting it is either in the wrong location or it was actually encroaching a little bit into where the cuts are taking place. This is something that would be very interesting to learn before going out to the machine and then potentially damaging the fixture or the cutter. If we continue the process, we can view it from different angles like we did before. And we actually get into the finishing motions here. So I'll go ahead and I'll speed up this simulation so that it just gets closer to the end of the program and we'll take a look when it gets done. Now that the part is finished cutting, 
I'm going to switch views so that we can take a closer look at it. The final configuration of the part has a couple of grooves in the 3D sculpted surface here. And we see evidently there's an area that was unfinished on this particular job. It's pretty easy to tell, but there's also some evidence of some mistakes over here where the tool plunged into material. All error messages are shown down in Vericut's message logger and can be viewed later and investigated. For example, to find out what was going on with this message, I can click on it and Vericut shows me the line in the NC program related to that error. If I want to actually see that process and what was going on at the time, I can enter Vericut's review mode. Now we're able to see exactly what was going on when that message was logged. This was another case where the grooving tool actually went down into that same area of the fixture that was supposedly machined away with the other tool. Vericut always tracks these errors for you and that way you can see them on a tool by tool basis to make sure that you clean up all your NC motions. What we'll do now is we'll take a look at how this part machined matches up with our finished part. So I've got the finished part loaded here and by doing a quick auto diff comparison I can see that there are the problem areas that we noticed on the left where we didn't do the machining but we also see that the part surface of the design model doesn't really match what was done in the NC program. This could be caused by an engineering change or simply a mistake in programming of the five axis motions but this blue color indicates that there's too much material left in that 3D sculpted surface area. I can also see a little bit of an area on the far right side of the part that didn't clean up as well. So there were a number of problems detected by Verica during this simulation. By seeing everything in Vericut first, we can not only make sure that all of our hybrid operations work in sequence with each other, but that we also manufacture a good finished part in the end.